Hello guys, welcome to this new video. So now we're going to go through question 3 and the May 25 specimen paper 2. So we are told that we have a microwave that emits electromagnetic waves and we place a flat piece of chocolate in it, turn the radio on and we have these melted spots being formed on the chocolate and each square is one centimeter wide. And firstly, we need to outline how a standing wave pattern of melted spots is formed. So this is a typical waves question. We need to define how a standing wave is formed. And well, the way a standing wave is formed is by the is, is through superposition of waves or through the constructive interference of two waves traveling in opposite directions. So standing waves are formed by the constructive interference of waves. So this is something just you should just remember. This comes up quite often in exams. Sometimes you need to write this down. And well, now as well, we, we get a mark for writing how a standing wave is formed. And then we also need to know that when we have the maximum amplitude of a standing wave, then we have maximum energy transfer as the amplitude of the motion is proportional to the energy being transferred. So whenever we have a uh, maximum amplitude spot that's where we will have maximum energy transfer over here and these are also called anti-nodes when we are talking about standing waves so so greatest energy transfer transfer at anti-nodes of the standing wave and well this is what melts the chocolate so this is where the chocolate will be melted and that's why we will have this uh, pattern here as Obviously, we don't have an anti-node everywhere along the, along the wave, only at given intervals. And in between these intervals, we have no melting taking place, or just very little. Then we need to determine taking appro appropriate measurements from the diagram. We need to calculate the frequency of the electromagnetic waves. So, what we well the formula we know is that C is equal to lambda times F. And this frequency is what we need to calculate. So we also know we have electromagnetic waves. So this we should just know that the speed is just the same as the speed of light. Speed of light is also an electromagnetic wave. So 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So the frequency will just be the speed divided by the wavelength. So 3 times 10 to the 8. And well, what is the wavelength? Well, we have this diagram here and we are told that every... Uh, square has a length of one centimeter and if we think about this pattern of anti-nodes we know that anti-nodes are both the maximum and minimum positions of displacement and so these are where the meltings will happen so if we imagine a wave above this diagram so then we would have something like this so we will have a, a maximum place of maximum amplitude over here and then we will have minimum amplitude over here and maximum amplitude here again now, this is not very much a scale, this should go something like this, but that's not the point here, it's just that we have these places of maximum amplitude, and we know the wavelength is defined as the distance between two crests or two troughs. So for example, this distance here would be one wavelength. So, well, okay, well not precisely, it would be technically here, it would be like the middle of these two melted spots so we would have to count the distance from from here to here from the middle of one to the middle of the other one 
that's where we will have these antinodes. And well, if we count these squares, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And one cent one square is twelve cent one centimeter, so twelve squares is twelve centimeters. So we just have to divide by zero point twelve as we want meters. Then we will get a frequency of two point five times ten to the nine hertz. And well, this was the end of the third question. I hope I was able to help and see you in the next question.